Hi everyone and welcome to my live creative time today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. Welcome everyone. It is great to be back for another week of fun crafting. And today I have got some brand new products to create with, um, with you. So I'm super excited to have my first play with these new products today. Um, so while everybody is finding their notifications that I've gone live, let's call this up on my other devices and then I can see all of your comments there. So let's just have a look here on my iPad. We'll bring that up here. There we go. And over on the computer. And I'm hoping that the internet will play nice because it was, we were having dropouts again this morning. So, um, Hopefully it'll be all, it's been okay since then. So hopefully it'll um, behave itself. So, alrighty. So I've got that up there. So as you're jumping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from, um, if this is your first time. And if you are watching the replay, then thank you so much for coming along. And if you are watching over on YouTube later on, thank you so much. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like what you see here. And uh, then you can click on the little bell notification while you're there. And then you can choose how you would like to be notified of um, future videos. And also too, if you are watching here on Facebook and you're not yet following my, play, my page, um, please click on follow so that you... Um, We'll get notifications of when I post here on Facebook as well. And uh, thank you everyone so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. All right. So um, before we jump in to our project today, let me tell you of a couple of things that are happening. We still have the last chance list um, or the last chance product sale that is going on. Now that's going to finish on the 1st of May. So we've only got one more week left. Um, if you had any of those products from the annual catalogue, that's the 2022 to 2023 annual catalogue, or the January to April 2023 mini catalogue, they're both retiring on the 1st of May. So be sure to grab um, those products that you had on your wish list. Now, some of the products are discounted up to 60%. Um, and I know that some of those products are still available now. Um, a lot of the inks that are retiring and the ink refills, um, they've already gone. I think there's there are a few ink pads left um, and some of the colored cardstock is still left as well. Um, my, all of the ink refills for those retiring colors have sold out though. Um, but yeah, and you can still get the coloring tools or the coloring tools in the different colors as well. Oh, no, I won't say all of them because I noticed that some of the Stampin' Blends had sold out. Um, but there's Stampin' Write markers and other things. So go over there and check that out. The, the easiest way to see what is still available is to go straight to the online store and have a look over there because um, the lists that I had are, you know, they haven't been updated with all of the, the stuff that is no longer available. So best place is to go straight to the online store and check it out over there. So be sure to do that. All right, I'm going to pop up here in the comments my links for you. Now you can go, um, you can you can go into this and it will bring up all the different links that I have, and then you can choose where you want to go. Um, I will also pop that. I'm just putting it in the comments now, and then I'll also pop it in the description of this video here on Facebook and on YouTube once I finish filming and when I upload it. So um, yeah, so feel free to check that out. All of my links are there. Um, I have got, so as you know, we have got the brand new catalog and I got mine spiral bound last week. And last night I sat and put all of my beautiful little tabs on there. So I know that they don't color coordinate with the cover. But that's okay. <laughs> I've got lots and lots of tabs on there, which helps me to find things in the catalogue quickly. And um, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like one of these catalogues, then please let me know and I'd love to send one out to you. I also, um, 
So I sent some out to my customers that have shopped with me in the last 12 months and they've been receiving those already. So they're very excited. And then just on Friday, I sent out some little um, catalog packs to go along with those as well with some more information. I also included one of these beautiful um, bookmarks that has got um, that I've created that have got all of the new colors. So we've got the new 2023 to 2025 in colors. We've got the brand new core colors and then all of the returning colors as well. And so my customers who have shopped with me in the last 12 months, they all got one of those. And I have had a um, couple more uh, requests, but I only have three more of these bookmarks left. So if you would like a catalog and a catalog pack and you don't already have a demonstrator, or if you um, perhaps haven't shopped with me for 12 months, um, if you're one of my previous customers, then um, if you pop an, uh, a request in for a catalog, I'll send those out to you. So um, yeah, so let me know. Um, so with the new catalog and all of the new colors, well, of course, with every new catalog, we get new designer series paper and lots and lots of other beautiful products. But I always do a paper share with every new catalog. So I've got um, an annual catalog product share with some of those designer series papers from the, uh, the new annual catalog. Now, this isn't all of them that are in the product share because um, I wasn't able to pre-order all of them but these are just the ones that I pre-ordered. So I have that available and I also have an in-color share. Now, don't take too much notice of the colors that have printed out from my printer because they're not true to color. Um, I'll show you actually what the actual colors are. I'll show you the actual colors when we tip down the camera actually to the desktop because um, we're gonna be playing with them today. But these are the two shares that I have running. So you can get, um, either one of them, or you can get both of them. Um, and if you click on the link, I'll put the individual link up for that actually. It is in that that um, the link tree that I just put up, but I will put, um, I will put the registration form up for the product shares as well, just as a separate link, if you wanna just grab that easily. So I did post about it on the weekend um that that is running now orders for my product shares are going to be closing on the 5th of may i have to think what month we're up to um just to give you a bit of a chance to get your catalogs and if you don't have a paper copy you can have a look online to have a look at all of those products to see um yeah to see if you like them and if you'd like to participate in the share so um yeah so check that out if you click on that link That'll take you through to all the information and it lists everything that's going to be in those shares. Um, and you can check that out. But hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully you want to get some of those lovely products. Well, I hope, I hope you do. Most of us do. <laughs> we want those lovely products. And doing a product share, um, participating in a product share is great because it's a great way of getting um, a sampling of a whole heap of different products. Um, rather than having to outlay for every single pack of paper or every single roll of ribbon in the in colors and every single packet of um, in color cardstock and things. So yeah, there's a share of those. So you're not getting, not outlaying for a full pack. So hopefully that helps some of you to get a great selection of products. So um, I can't show you the inside of this catalog yet until it goes live on the, the 2nd of May. Um, I can only show you the front cover, but um, yeah, remember that if you would like one of those and you're here in Australia and you don't already have a demonstrator, let me know and I'd love to get one out to you. Got some spares down on my shelf today. Now you'll see I've done all of my, my new colors and I've done all of my ink pads and um, the blends I just received today. Oh. I'll grab it. Today, I just received um, another order. I had another, a small order that I put in on the free shipping day last week. And I've got my order already. And in there is some more blends storage because I had run out of room for my blends and I needed a couple more rows. So I've got another one. So now I can put all of my blends that were in my tub, which I showed you last week, 
which is still sitting in the tub, I can get them all on my shelves now. So super excited. I'll get that done in the next couple of days. As time permits, my calendar is looking very full this week. <laughs> I'm like, how am I going to fit all of this in? It gets crazy busy, doesn't it? All right, now let me check. Have we got any comments yet from anybody? Say hi if you're here. Don't be shy. Um, feel free to chat with me. Now, I was just thinking today as I was getting ready, I was thinking, just in the last couple of minutes, I was thinking the weather is cooling down, starting to get into, you know, cup of tea weather again. Usually when I'm crafting, I, um, well, of late, I haven't been having a hot drink. I've just been sticking with my water because it gets too hot. And especially when I'm filming a live and I'm talking, I get a bit hot and um, not bothered, but, you know, a bit, bit hot, overheated. So I haven't been having my cups of tea while I've been creating during my lives. But it's kind of getting to that weather now that I think I'm going to have to start making those, cup, those cuppers again and... Um, yeah, start having those again with me when I'm crafting with you all. All right, so I've got some brand new products to play with today. So I'm going to share those with you. And it's based around the new in colors and one of the new sweets, which I was able to pre-order. So as Stampin' Up! demonstrators, we can pre-order some of the new products, which is always super exciting because we get to play with them before everybody else. Um, and so this week I'm going to be making um, some sample projects that I'll be able to share with you all when the catalogue goes live next week. Is it next week already? Let's see. Yeah, next Tuesday. The catalogue is going live next Tuesday. So tomorrow week, which is super exciting. Um, so yeah, so I'll be busy playing this week. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, of course, um, with the annual catalog, we just get to, to order a select uh, from a selection of products. We don't get to pre-order everything in the catalog because Stampin' Up! needs to make sure that there's plenty of product left for all of the customers as well when the catalog goes live. Otherwise, all of us demonstrators would snap it all up. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we had a selection and uh, I didn't get everything from the selection because, of course, you know, you've got to watch the budget too. Um, but my wish list has already started and I know that it's going to grow as I keep flicking through that catalogue. I'll keep finding new things, but it's always super exciting when there's a new catalogue. So I look forward to sharing some of those new things with you um, as the months roll on. Um, so, but today we're going to start with the, the, uh, one of the sweets and the end colors. Now, if you, um, oh, actually I didn't ask what everyone did on their weekend. It's usually how I start is welcoming everybody. So welcome. Thank you for being here and, um, asking you what you did on your weekend. Um, so if you would like to share, share in the comments what you did on the weekend. So on Saturday evening. Um, well, actually, was it Saturday? Yes, yeah, Saturday afternoon, my daughter and I went and um, did a few drop-offs of catalogs and catalog packs to some of my customers. And then we had to go and do a little bit of shopping. And then in the evening, my team and I had a really fun pajama party. So we had it via Zoom because my team is spread out all over everywhere, um, all over the country. And uh, so we just had a really laid back, fun crafting evening together in our jammies. And we just had lots of fun. And we had some, we heard some funny stories from some of our team members. And uh, we just had a really great time. And I think we, we uh, finished up at about 11 p.m. So we were together for about three hours. And it was lovely. We just did our own thing and crafted our own thing and shared what we were creating and it was just really, really lovely. So I love to do things like that with my team. We do gather every month um, in our team gathering. And um, that's when I do recognitions and stamping up news. And then we have a shorter um, creative time together. But um, trying to do some additional um, gatherings together just, just for fun, just to get together and just craft uh, last, last, uh, when did we go? January, we went out for lunch together during the school holidays. We went out for lunch together and yeah, we just really love spending time with each other. It's so much fun. 
Um, hey Brenton, how are you? Great to see you. Oh, you worked all weekend, did you? Oh, that's no fun, is it? <laughs> Unless you absolutely love your job, then it could be fun. Um, yeah, so, so we just had a really, really beautiful weekend together. Uh, as well, sorry, evening together on Saturday. So that was really lovely. Um, but yeah, so they're kinds of the sorts of things that we do for our team and, um, or I do for, for my team. Um, so if that is something that you think you would love uh, to be part of a crafting community like that, we do have a lot of fun together. Um, and I run team creative challenges and we share our creativity together. Um, we do all sorts of things. And I keep everybody up to date. And of course, we get that amazing 20% discount as well. So if you would like more information about joining my team, then please feel free to let me know. And um, yeah, I'd love to give you some more information. So when you join, you get $66 worth of free product, which is awesome. You only pay $169. And then you can choose um, the products that you want to put in your kit. So you get to choose $235 worth of product and that can be anything that is current that you like. So it's super awesome. Hi Rose, how are you? Hi Dimity, great to see you both ladies. How are you? Um, yeah, so if that is something that you would uh, be interested in and becoming part of our creative community, then please let me know. Um, now you don't need to sell product, you don't need to hold classes or do Facebook lives like I do or anything like that. You can simply join for the discount and for the crafting community. But if you don't want the community and you just want the discount, that's okay too. It, I'm happy for you to sit in the background and watch what's going on. Um, it's up to you if you, you would like to participate or not, that's totally fine and we're all in different stages um, and, and different on different journeys of our life. And um, yeah, different people want different things and, and that's totally fine too. So I'm happy, for, uh, happy to support you in whichever way you would like to be supported. All right, so that's a little bit about my team. Um, so yeah, all right, well, I think we will get started with our crafting and I'm gonna tip the camera down to the desktop and um, show you what we uh, have in store for you today. Oh, Rose said, we went to the Van Morrison tribute show. Great music and met some nice people. Oh, wow. That sounds like a lot of fun, Rose. Awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Very cool. I had um, one of my friends had tickets to a concert and she put out a post to, this morning, I think it was, to um, see if anybody was interested. And I was so tempted. By the time I saw the post, though, somebody else had snapped up the extra ticket. So I was like, oh, that's okay. Maybe I'm just not meant to go. I <laughs> uh, haven't been to a concert for years, actually. So it's been a really long time. Ah, oh, that's so cool, Rose. All right, well, I'm going to cover up the camera so I can tip it down onto the desk and I just cover that up so that I don't make you dizzy while I'm doing all of the transitions. Um, so bear with me one moment while I just get this ready for you. I'll tighten everything back up. Okay. Well, it felt like it was going to fall then. I think we're all good. There we go. Oh, I might need to just do a little bit of adjusting there. All right. I shall move my keyboard out of the way because we don't need that now. And let's move this up. So I've got some large grid paper down today because I thought we might be doing some um, stamping off. We probably will be doing some stamping off. So I thought um, we better have some grid paper down today. Um, I still have some of the small grid paper, but it has actually sold out now. It's not available anymore. But these large sheets of grid paper, they're still available. And they come in a pad of 100 sheets. So they last forever. And um, yeah, and they're really great to keep your workspace um, clean and tidy and you don't get ink all over your desk and make a mess because that would be what I would do. 
<laughs> so I've always got to have my grid paper. Alrighty, so let me show you what we are, well, actually, let's talk about the in colours first. So I did share the in colours um, in my un live unboxing just recently, a couple of weeks ago. Um, so you may have seen that, but I stamped up a little um, template of the different colours. And of course, on screen, um, they're going to look a little bit different to what you will see them in real life. Okay, but we've got the five new ink colors and they're really, really beautiful, earthy sort of tones, which I love. I love earthy tones. So um, I love these colors. Now, the ink pads can be a little bit juicy when you first get them. So I'll talk about that as we're crafting with them today because we might need to um, just press that ink down into the ink pad a little bit if they're a little bit too juicy and I'll show you how to do that. But we've got Boho Blue, Copper Clay, Moody Mauve, Pebbled Path, and Wild Wheat. And this is the cardstock, the ink, and the Stampin' Blends in both the, um, the thin and the thick in the light and the dark. So we've got the thin and the thick tip, or the bullet tip and the brush tip. So they are the new colours, and these are the colours that we're going to be playing with today. But aren't they just so gorgeous and they coordinate so beautifully together and I love those really deep earthy tones um, I was doing I was putting um, what was I doing I was putting the the caps on and off I was doing something I can't remember what it was and I splattered I accidentally splattered some of the ink on my um, from my, my markers on my um, template and I was so annoyed because it looked really pretty and clean and then I splattered all this ink I was like oh <laughs> but that's okay so um, yeah so that's what we're going to be playing with today um, here's a closer look at those bookmarks that I held up before so this has got all of the new colors so there's our in colors up there then we've got the four new core colors and the, I think it's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. And the seven returning colors. So these returning colors, they were all um, previous in colors from different years. And um, yeah, so there's lots and lots of new colors there. So they're beautiful. That's that's our new color range in the uh, with the color refresh. That's coming and then of course we've got all of the um, the other colors that are staying all right so we are going to be playing with do you know what I don't even actually where's my catalog here it is I have to just double check the name of this suite because I'm still getting my head around all of the new um, names for everything which always happens at the beginning of a new catalog so this is the fresh as a daisy suite um, and we're going to be using, uh, going to be creating a card with that today. Oh, wow. whoops. Sorry about that, everyone. I just dropped one of my blocks with my stamps on it. Oh, and it fell face down. So I'm going to have to clean that one because that'll have muck all over it now. I'll have dust on it probably from the floor or dirt. Oh, so here's the cardstock actually, um, of those new in colors. So we've got the Copper Clay, Wild Wheat, Pebbled Path, Boho Blue and Moody Mauve. Now the Moody Mauve is sort of like a, it's like a purpley pink. It's not pink, but it's not purple. It's sort of a purpley pink. It's a really pretty colour. Really love it. So they're the colours. Um, and then we've got the Designer Series paper and I've been cutting that up today to use it, but I'll show you quickly all of the um the papers so they're in 12 by 12 sheets 12 by 12 inches that is so this is the fresh as a daisy 12 by 12 designer series paper and you get two sheets of each um two sheets of each design and each design is double-sided so this one is really great so in this sheet, you've got all these different panels that you can cut up and use in different ways on your projects. So, um, oh, Rose said, luckily, it's always on an afternoon, so it's good for us mature people. Oh, the concert. Oh, 
oh that's really good so that it's not too late in the evening oh that's good that's good um yeah so these so you've got some beautiful designs there that you can use as features as card fronts on your cards like look at this one this one you just need to add that to the front of your card add a ribbon and a sentiment maybe some bling um yeah and you're done like it's beautiful even a bit of wink of stella on these daisies would be gorgeous that'd be really gorgeous um so yeah even this one we've got the a beautiful scene there that would be lovely on a card so yeah so i just really love that one some backgrounds some cool backgrounds and then on the other side we've got the beautiful moody mauve um it's like a, a painted brush stroke design so we've got two sheets of that one oops hang on a sec let me move my mouse or i'm going to be clicking buttons then we've got this one, which I um, was cutting for today's project. So this is the, I think I've got that one upside down, actually. So we've got daisies on that side. And then on the reverse side, you've got this beautiful brush stroke again in the pebbled path. Okay, so there's that one. This one's really sweet. How pretty is that? That little daisy garden. I can just see really pretty cards made with that one. And then depending on how you cut that paper, um, you could use this top section as actually, you know what, this would make a beautiful scrapbooking page as well. I might use this piece for a scrapbooking page. I had a whole heap of photos printed of Callie last week um, and they arrived. I ordered them online and they arrived last week and I finished off. I don't know if you remember, I was doing that scrapbooking page a few weeks ago. It was the first one I'd done in like 15 years. And um, the photos I printed at home, the ink wasn't setting properly. Well, I got the photos to replace them. So I finished the page the other day and I've popped it into an album now. So I'm ready to do some more. Um, I love this one. I think this one would be beautiful. And even if you cut that for cards, um, for card fronts, you could use this part here as black background. So yeah, really beautiful. And on the other side, we have the gorgeous copper clay. Look how rich that color is. Isn't that beautiful? I love that color. Very earthy. Then we've got some, um, oh, that's this one here. These daisies here. And those beautiful in colors. And that's the backgrounds. Beautiful sky or water. Um, or just a coloured background, really gorgeous. I can see sky. I see sky there. Yeah, love that one. Got a really bold print here with that gorgeous copper clay in the background. And I think the leaves look like they might be the um, the new pretty peacock, perhaps, and maybe a little bit of Lost Lagoon in there as well on the leaves. So there's a few other colours incorporated in there. Same with the um, the flower centers. There's a bit of um, other colors, like maybe some crushed curry or daffodil delight, um, lemon lolly. Yeah, I think maybe daffodil delight and lemon lolly in the um, flower centers there. And then we've got this blue, this blue green tone on the background here. I'm not sure which colors these would be. Maybe pretty peacock and what would that be? Um, granny apple green maybe. Anyway, they go really well together. And then this one. This is my favourite one. This is the one we're using today with the beautiful moody mauve. And we've got some wild wheat in there, a little bit of copper clay um, and the white, of course. We've even got, um, yeah, some lighter shades in there too. Of sort of looks like a combination between the copper clay and the moody mauve really gorgeous and on the other side we've got the wild wheat the wild wheat is a really beautiful color so when I first saw that in the catalog I sort of thought oh that's going to be an interesting color to work with but it's actually like a rich gold it's like it'll be, really be a great replacement for a gold color um, it's a really really rich color it's really nice in person but as I said sometimes you need to see these in person um, because they often do look different in person to same with any of the colors they often look different in person to um, 
in the catalog. So, yeah. All right, so I'll pop those back in the packet so I keep those all together. And I've got some pieces already cut down for today's project. I'll get those back in there. There we go. Uh, last night I pulled, oh, like, well, actually it wasn't last night, it was early hours of this morning. <laughs> you know me, I'm um, such a late night owl. Oh, actually, let me tell you the colours that are in here. But what I was going to say is I pulled out all of my um, retiring designer series paper off my shelves last night to make room for all the new papers because we can order, a, well, I've got a few packs of the new papers and then I'll order some more when the catalogue goes live. So the the um, colours in here are Azure Afternoon, that's one of the new colours, Boho Blue, Bubble Bath, that's another one of the new colours, Cajun Craze, Copper Clay, Crushed Curry, curry Burley Espresso, Garden Green, Lemon Lolly, Moody Mauve, Pebbled Path, Pretty Peacock and Wild Wheat. So we've got other colours in there mixed in with the um, new in colours. So, yeah, we've got some of the, the brand new colours and some um, carrying over colours as well. So it's a bit of a mixture in this paper, but all of the, um, yeah, all of the in colours do feature in there. All right, so that is the paper. And this is the stamp set, the Cheerful Daisies stamp set. So the images on the front are shown at 90%, so the actual stamps are larger. I'll show you. Um, so that's this one here. So you can see the difference in the size. It's quite a bit bigger. Um, so this is a two-step stamp set. Um, so you have the detail of the stamp, and then you've got the, um, the coloured or solid colour fill, as I like to call it, stamp. Uh, so you can stamp the outline and colour it by hand if you want to, or if you want to do something quick and easy like I'm doing today, then you can use the colour fill um, stamp or the solid stamp to colour the um, yeah the, the detail. And then you've got the centres as well. So we've got a large centre, a small centre, and then there's a little leaf and a stem. And we've got a couple of um, other little ones there too. Now... I stamped some um, I stamped some samples here just to have a little play with this stamp set before I went live today. This one I've actually stamped upside down. It goes that way with the petals um, falling down. So I stamped that one upside down. But yeah, I was just having a little play with that. I noticed my Wild Wheat ink pad was very juicy. So when I first stamped it, I lost a little bit of the detail. So what I did is I took my trusty old bone folder, or you can use a, a spoon, a plastic spoon or a, a metal teaspoon, something that you can either clean or rinse off, um, and just scraped that gently along the surface of the ink pad to press that ink down into the ink pad. And then I got much better detail in my stamp that way. And we'll probably do that again today too, as we're using it. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to have a little play to see how they layered together and, yeah, really liked how they, they layer. And then, of course, we've got the dies. So let's have a look at those. So we've got the dies and there's additional dies in here as well. So, of course, we've got, so this is Cheerful Daisy dies. They have the same name as the stamp set. Thank you, Stampin' Up! <laughs> Makes our life so much easier. Um... So we've got dies that cut out the, the flowers and the stem and this, these little sets of flowers here. We've got additional dies for the centres as well. Um, and then we've got a couple of additional dies. So we've got this sort of um, twiggy, leafy, I don't know what you'd call it, um, one here. And then this one here is a full piece so this is a full die but it incorporates this one this one this one and some extra leaves as well so what you can do is layer these over the top of them so we're going to do that today um, I'll show you how to do that and layer those over the top or you can cut these out individually with these dies 
And then you've got these additional layering pieces that are sitting inside. Look, I'll take this off and show you. See, this is one die that cuts out that flower. I mean, remember that this is actually smaller on here. So if we were cutting out the, the actual flower, oh, we'll go this way. It does fit around the flower. Okay. And then these pieces, if you were die cutting that in cardstock, these are additional layering pieces that you can layer on top. They look awesome. And then we've got a lovely sentiment die there as well. So, yeah, how cool are they? So there's lots of different things that you can do with this um, with this set. Got some great, um, some great sentiments there too. I think I need this one. Oops-a-daisy, so sorry. I'm always forgetting to send my cards in time for people's birthdays. Isn't that terrible? Not always, but I often. Birthdays just sort of creep up on me. And then before I know it, it's somebody's birthday and I realise that I haven't sent their card yet. So I think I need that one. <laughs> All right. Also in this suite, we have got the adhesive backed solid gems. So these are part of the suite as well. So we've got the designer series paper, the stamps, the dies, and the um the beautiful gems as well which are gorgeous so they're in the three colors um and you've got the three different sizes these other ones are hidden up the top underneath the um the flap there there you go aren't they beautiful so they coordinate so that's that's the um the suite and then because we're playing with in colors in the in color range, we've also got the 2023 to 2025 in color dots. So these will color coordinate with what we're playing with today. And there's again more up the top. There's the um, the pebbled path ones up the top. So aren't they beautiful? They're nice and shiny. I love a shiny bling. And then of course we've got the ribbons. Now I only pulled out two of the ribbons because these are probably uh, I couldn't decide which colour I would use, but these are probably the ones that I will use, one of these. So we've got the Moody Mauve and the Wild Wheat, but this ribbon comes in all of the in colours. Okay, so they're all the things that we're going to be playing with. I've got a few additional dies as well, but how about we jump in and we start creating our project. All right. Just organize my, my little tote over here with all of my bits and pieces. The dies I'll keep near the front because we're going to need those. All right, so as I said, I was having a little play with these. I'm going to show you how to, to do those. I didn't stamp this one terribly well, but um, it took me a few goes to work out which way the uh, flower center went because on the big one, um, there's a particular way that it goes. The little one, it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, so it took me a few goes just to work that out. All right, so I'm going with a color sketch, uh, sorry, a, um, a card sketch today. And I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the sketch. Um, this is an old one from 2014. It's one I um, had saved on Pinterest a long time ago um, from Viva La Verve or Verve. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Um, it's by Maureen Plutt or Plutt. So that's the sketch that we're going to be going with today. And I wanted to use a sketch because I wanted to use um, a few of the different pattern papers together. And I thought doing using a sketch is a great way or a great sort of, you know, guide to putting those together. Um, yeah, so that's where we're going to start. Uh, okay, so I've got some of the pieces already cut for my project. I've worked out my layers. The only one I haven't cut yet is oh, this pretty one here. We're going to cut that in a little bit, but I've got some of my other layers here. Um, you'll see I've also cut a circle <clears throat> from the stylish shape dies. Okay, so this is the largest one. Um, I did have the next size down, the second largest one, but then when I placed it on the card, it was a bit too small, I thought. But I've got both of them cut, so we'll play with them and see which one we like. Then I've also cut a scalloped border. 
using, let me show you. Whoops. Oh, I'm just losing a die there. Um, and I've got all spare ones in here. This is the scalloped contour dies. And these ones are carrying over into um, the new annual catalog, thankfully, because I use these ones a lot. And we're using the scallop from that one. Okay. So I did those ahead of time just to save a little bit of time, but I've got all of my layers. Now, all of this, uh, the uh, measurements will be on my blog tomorrow. Um, so, yeah, I'll give you all of those tomorrow. But we'll start with our stamping and then we'll come to piecing everything together. Okay, so we are stamping today in Moody Mauve and Wild Wheat. Okay to coordinate with our designer series paper. So I just basically pulled um, the colors from the designer series paper. We do have some copper clay in there as well. So copper clay would work as well. Um, but I just decided to work on these two colors. And I'm also using a little bit of pebbled path on the card, uh, designer series paper on the card as well. So, all righty. So let's start and I'll show you how to stamp these stamps. So I've got my stamps already on the blocks and I've got the three, the three different stamps. So I've got the large daisy, the small daisy, and then the, the one, this one I keep putting up the wrong way. <laughs> the one with the petals that are flowing down. I'll just move those back in again, those lights. Um, the one that has the three little flowers on it, I'm probably not going to use that one today, but I did just mount it up just so I could have a little play with the stamp. Uh, and then we've got the two centers. So we've got the large center for the large stamp, and then we've got the small center for these two here. Okay. All right, so they're all of our stamps. I've got them up on the blocks already. Um, you'll notice some of them look a little bit pinkish. Um, that's because some of these colored inks are highly pigmented and they, they can stain your photopolymer stamps, but it doesn't affect how your stamps work. As long as you clean off that surface ink from your stamps, you're good to go. Okay. So don't be worried if your stamps turn a little bit pink. It doesn't happen with the, the cling stamps, the red rubber. It only happens with the photopolymer, the clear ones. All righty. Now, I don't have, let me grab, let me grab my um, stamp and pierce mat because we are working with photopolymer stamps. So when you're working with photopolymer stamps, you will get a nicer finished um, image using a stamp and pierce mat because it gives you that little bit of cushioning underneath. Now, when I was stamping with these ones, I didn't use it, um, which might account for me not stamping this one so well. Because I was in a rush, you know, as, as you are when you, <laughs> well, as I am when I'm planning for a Facebook Live. Alrighty. So let's stamp these flowers. Now, I found the easiest way to line these up was to stamp the outline first. Okay, so this is the detail stamp. So we'll ink that one up. And we're just stamping that first generation. Okay, so stamping that heavy with the, the first generation of ink. Now, with the second one, we're going to do some stamping off. And I do have some scrap paper here. So we'll just bring that in. So we're going to ink that up on our stamp. Bring in my scrap paper. And we're just going to quickly stamp off some of that ink. And then we're going to stamp that. And we call this second generation. So we're just going to line that up. Now, because I've got the, um, the detail the lined detail already stamped I can see where to line that up and there we go so there you have your your colored stamp okay now if you didn't want to color your stamp let's do the same with the small one so we'll get our ink okay if you wanted to just color that yourself you might want to stamp that say in um Memento ink and use your Stampin' Blends to colour it. You can do that. You might want to stamp it in stays on ink and colour it with watercolours. You can do that as well. But I'm using the, the um, solid image to do my colouring for me because it's so much quicker. 
Oh, I didn't stamp that one very well. Didn't line that up. Let's do that one again. Stamp another one down here. Let's line that up a little bit better. And take my time. There we go. That's better. There we go. All right, and we'll do this one as well. Let's see if I can fit this one in here. There we go. So it's really easy to do two-step stamping. Stamp off. Now, if I didn't stamp off some of that ink before stamping over the detail, what would happen would be you'd get a very heavy colour and you'd lose a lot of that detail in the stamp. Okay, so um, you certainly can stamp it full strength if you want to, but you will lose some of that detail. All right, so let's use our wild wheat for the flower centers now. So we'll start with our large one. Now what I did is um, I stamped this a few times onto scrap paper to work out which way was up. Because when you stamp it, you'll notice it's got certain detail that if stamped the wrong way, if you stamp it upside down, it looks like the flower is upside down. So what I did is I put a little, not sure if you can see there, I put a little dot with my Sharpie so that at the top of the stamp so that I knew that that was the top. So you can just put that on on the, um, the, the photopolymer. Okay, so that's how I knew. So I'm just going to do that um, first generation. Oh, you know what? This ink pad is going to be really inky. Let me see, because I've had it closed. Yeah, it's really inky. So what I'm going to do, I'll show you how to do this. You take either an old bone folder. Now, the bone folders, because they are made of cattle bone, they are porous. So you can see this one is quite stained. This is an old one of mine, and I use this one only for this purpose. Um, but if you don't have an old bone folder, you might like to use a plastic spoon or you can even use a metal spoon and keep that just for this purpose or just wash it once you've finished using it. All right, so what I do is I take this and I gently run that along the ink pad. And as I'm running it along, I'm pressing down the ink into the ink pad. And you'll notice that the ink pad will start to get a little bit lighter in color. So it's not removing a whole heap of ink. Oh, I will get a little bit on my bone folder, but it's actually pressing it down into the ink pad because when we close our ink pads, this is how they are designed. We're flipping it over upside down. So that means the ink pad is actually being stored so that the ink will run to the top of the ink pad. Okay, that's so that it keeps the ink at the surface of the, the ink pad. Now that is great um, for when you're stamping, but often when you get a brand new ink pad, they can be quite juicy. And this one, um, this one was one of my leaky ones when I first got it. It had leaked a little bit because it was so, so juicy. I'm just gonna get a baby wipe to clean my bone folder. You can use a cloth or you can run it under the tap. Um, I'm not near my sink and I can't leave the camera right now, so I'm just going to use a baby wipe. Um, yeah, so that's what you can do. Now, if you do happen to get a, an ink pad that is very juicy, there is one of two things that you can do. If you are a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can contact Stampin' Up! straight away about that um, and let them know, and then they will work with you um, to rectify that. Um, if you are a customer, be sure to let your demonstrator know straight away so that they can contact Stampin' Up! on your behalf. Okay, um, with mine, when mine leaked, it wasn't too, too bad. Um, so I took, I'd actually just noticed when I opened this that there was some that had leaked in the side there that I didn't realise. So I'm just going to wipe that while I'm here. Um, I just took a baby wipe. I took the plastic off the outside and it, thankfully it hadn't leaked outside of the plastic. So I just took a baby wipe and just cleaned it up um, and it was good to go. Oh, it was only actually leaked on that one side. Yep. So that's all good now. Um, but yeah, sometimes that will happen if it's really, really juicy. And if when um, the couriers have, because when the ink pads are packed in your box, they're packed flat, so they shouldn't leak. But the problem is once the package is handed over to the couriers or the, the delivery people, they often will turn your 
your box on its side and I have so many that are delivered to me on my side and I'm thinking oh no I've got ink in that one um, and they don't know that we've got ink in our boxes but that's how it can leak is if um, the boxes have been either um, transported or stored or delivered on their side and the ink can just seep out a little bit so that's how that happens um, but yeah so you can just um, yeah but certainly you know let, let us know if there's a problem um yeah so we can help you with that all right so now that we've scraped we should get a nice detailed image that's not as um juicy all right so i'm going to stamp this little center just at a slight angle in my flower there we go and then we'll do the little one there and there. Oh, no, it was this one we were going to use, wasn't it? Actually, I might turn that up that way. Oh, that looks better up that way. There you go. It doesn't really matter with the little one. It's more the big one. Okay, so there we go. And so also, too, now if I stamp that leaf as well. Where's that little leaf? There it is. Oh, I needed to clean that one, didn't I? Because I dropped it on the floor. Oh, hi, Glenda. How are you? Sorry, I haven't been looking at the comments. Let me just glance up to the comments to see. Oh, I've missed a few, actually. Um, hi, Roz, how you going? You love the French name for moody mauve. Mauve is melancholic, or as my son says, slightly depressed mauve. Oh, I said melancholy. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, there you go. So we'll give these ones a clean while we're there. Hi, Fee, how you going? Hi, Deborah. Oh, we've got people jumping on now. Glenda's jumped on and Roz jumped on when I wasn't looking and Fee's now here and Deborah's here. So great. Um, Amber says, wild wheat, wild wheat ink looks more green on screen. I think it's a bit more yellowish in real life. Oh, does it? It's looking green on the screen. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it's quite a goldy colour in real life. It's a goldy, yellowy colour. Oh, there you go. Now, this is the one I dropped on the floor, so I'll give that a little clean. I hope I'm not putting too much grot on my <laughs> on my chamois and dry that off. After you've cleaned your stamps, make sure you dry them off before you take them to your ink because you don't want to take any moisture to your ink pad. All right, so now when we stamp that leaf, we'll get that nice detail in the leaf because we scraped that um the ink pad a little bit okay so there we go all right now i haven't decided about the sentiment completely yet so i'm not going to stamp the sentiment just yet i do have a sentiment label um die cut already in fact i've got two of them i did, couldn't decide which shape i was going to use um but yeah we'll do the stamping of that after all right, so I'll bring in my mini. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these apart a little bit because I'm going to use my mini and these won't all fit through my mini like that if I try. So um, they should be right like that. I think that one I wasn't going to use and we'll get a couple of leaves as well. There we go. And then we've got some spares I can use for another project. That's my scrap. So we'll take that off camera. And we've finished with our stamp and pierce mat for the moment, but I'll keep that handy. All right. Bring in my mini. Does anyone have any questions so far about any of the new products or, oh, you just got home, Deborah. Oh, nice. Um, or any of the products that I've used today or questions about two-step stamping or about new ink pads or anything like that, pop them in your comments if you've got any questions. I'm going to need to cut these apart a little bit too. They're just a little bit wider than my plates. And I want to make sure that I get my dies around those. I'll get rid of this one actually because that was the dodgy one I did. Oh, I'll put it in my paper recycling. All right, let's see how many we can fit on here at once. Actually, let's just trim that there. Should fit all three of those on there. 
yeah, we'll fit all those three on there. Can you see that? I'll just move that up a little bit. All right, so let's find the dies, the individual dies for that one. So I've got the large one here. Uh, let me grab some washi. Ooh, there we go. I've got a little bit of washi here. If I can find the end of it. There it is. That was good timing, Deborah, that you just got home. Just in time to watch me create this card. Um, I was showing the, I think what you missed was just, I was showing the suite. You can go back and watch the replay later anyway, but I was showing the suite and some of the new products and the new um, in colors. And what else were we talking about? Oh yeah, my, um, my product shares, which you already know about. And yeah, I don't think you missed a whole heap because we hadn't really started crafting yet. I was just talking about all the beautiful, about the um, this beautiful suite. All right, so when I use my washi tape in this way, I dab it off on my shirt first because some of these washi tapes I find are really, really sticky and I don't want them tearing my cardstock. Once I've taken the time to stamp them and then um, die cut them, I don't want them to tear as I'm removing my dies. Oh, which way does this one line up now? Sometimes you just got to maneuver them a little bit till you work out which way they line up. Oh, there it is. There it is there. Yeah. So I dab my washi tape off on my shirt. I've just got a cotton um a cotton shirt on today, so jeans are also good to dab off your washi tape. You can do the same thing with the um, Stampin' Up! masking tape as well. You can use it in the same way if you have any of that. Um, it's great for masking. It's also great for this type of thing as well. But it is very sticky. So just make sure that you do dab it off a little bit first before you use it. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. Take that through our machine. Is anybody else crafting along with me today? What are you creating? Or are you all just watching today? So today's the first day that I've actually played with these. As I said, I did a little bit of um, practice stamping earlier today. Um, but it's the first time I've actually created with this um, new suite. So that's pretty exciting. Ah, oh, Fee's quilting. Very nice. So she is crafting, but she's doing a different type of crafting. Very good. How's it going, Fee? Are you getting there with it? I know it's been a big project for you that you've been working on a while. Um, <laughs> oh, you're so sweet, Rose. Rose says, just watching the expert. I don't... <laughs> That's very sweet of you. I don't know that I'm an expert, but um, it's very kind of you to say that, though. Thank you. <laughs> and now watch as I muck everything up. <laughs> now, where did my die sheet go? Oh, right, right there. All right, so I'll pop these dies away. Um, Brenton says he's just watching today. He's still waiting for his pre-order to be delivered. Ah, oh, still not there yet, Brenton. Oh, hopefully it'll be there soon. There has been, um, for anybody wondering, there has been a bit of a delay on the shipping um, because on the, oh, you might have already heard me say this, on the 4th of April, when we had the, um, the last chance list went up, and then, so that was from the two catalogues. On the same day, we had the demonstrator pre-order for the new products as well. And on that day, it was the biggest sales day that Stampin' Up! has had in their 35-year history in that one day. they uh, The orders were 20 times the amount of what they normally are. So, and then on top of that, we then had Easter 
um, shortly after with the public holidays. So all of that being said, there is a slight little delay at the moment. So everyone just, um, yeah, has been being very patient for their orders. But um, Stampin' Up! is working really hard to get them um, back up to date. In fact, I placed an order last week on the free shipping day and my order arrived today. So that was really quick. I was very surprised that it arrived so quickly. I'm going to cut some of these little leaves. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them yet, but we'll cut them anyway. Um, yeah, so that was really amazing. Oh, you're still waiting for your pre-order too, Glenda. Um, you rang Stampin' Up! today and they're still trying to track it down. Oh, okay. Oh, hopefully that, at least you're able to ring them for them to help you. So that's good. Hopefully they'll be able to get it to you very soon. Yeah, I couldn't believe it when I heard that 20 times the amount of um, volume in one day. In fact, they said that it was um, the, the amount of sales on that one day, the 4th of April, was almost more than the entire month of March. So, <laughs> so that is why we have shipping delays at the moment. They're all working so hard to try and get them out to us. So, yeah. But they'll get there. They'll catch up. We just all have to be very patient. And I know it's hard, isn't it? When we want all, we want our new products, especially us demonstrators who are waiting for our pre-orders, we just want to get all the new things in so that we can start playing. But, yeah, we, we just need to be a little bit patient. So how amazing is that? The biggest sales in 35 years on a single day. I couldn't believe that when I heard that. I was like, what? That's amazing. So, all right, so I'm going to do one more of these little flowers just so we've got three because, you know, got to have an uneven number, an odd number. Um, not even sure if I'm going to use them yet, but we'll see. Um, oh, it should have been there on the 18th, but nothing yet. Oh. I wonder if it was delivered to the wrong... Have you checked the tracking, Glenda? Did it say it had actually been delivered? I wonder if it had been delivered to the wrong address. Maybe it went to a different address or another house in the street or something. Oh, I'm sure Stampin' Up! will track it down for you anyway and um, be able to sort it out for you. They're always very helpful. All right. Now, there's this one here, and I'm not sure... If I want to use that one, I don't, I think this one is more for if you are um, using the dies on their own rather than, oh, it would be up that way. That's why it's not working. There we go. Yeah. So if you're using the dies um, with the detail, then you can have this one behind it. But I don't think it's going to work with the stamped image because it's going to be the same size so you won't see it i was thinking it might be nice as a border at the background but i don't think you're going to see it so it's more for layering with these these detailed dies over the top of these ones yeah so it won't work so these these ones can all layer over these ones so yeah but we might we might end up using this one but i'm not sure what color so we'll wait we'll wait to do that um, oh, you know what? I want to do one of those in wild wheat. Ooh, or maybe grey. Yeah, okay. Let's do a couple of these little ones. I've got, um, now let's see. I've got my cardstock here and I've got, I've got a piece of the pebbled path. And we'll do a piece of the wild wheat as well. I'll just cut this one down in half. Hang on one sec. Let's do that quickly off camera. Save a bit of time. All right. 
So if we just want a little bit, I might just cut that. I'm just going to roughly cut that with my snips and I'll neaten that up with a, my trimmer later so I can use that for another piece. Not for this project, but probably for another project. I don't normally hack at my cardstock like that with my snips. <laughs> But we could probably get, if I snip that there, we can probably even get two out of this. I'm just trying to um, use as little cardstock as possible so that we've got more that we can use for other things. I'm trying to be a little bit thrifty. Okay. Um, no tracking doesn't say it's been delivered. Oh, okay then. Well, that's good. At least you know it hasn't gone to the wrong address. So that's good. Uh, oh, Deborah's still waiting on her catalog. Oh, it should be there really soon, Deborah. They um, only started to be received at the end of. Oh, hang on. Um, wait, when did I get mine? I'm just trying to think when I got mine. I did post in our group when I got mine. I can't remember how long ago that was. Um, Stampin' Up have said if we don't have our catalogs by the 8th of May, to give them a, a get in contact with them and let them know um, but hopefully it should be there really soon Deborah they go out in batches so um, they don't always all get there at the same time I think they call it um, bulk bulk mailing they send them out in in um, yeah in lots I think well, hopefully it'll get there soon That's all right. Meanwhile, because you're a demonstrator, you can actually view it online. So that's good. At least you can still have a little a little glimpse at it and you can still start your wish list and choose the choose which things speak to you. <laughs> I always like to say that. Which things speak to me? Yeah, which which things you like? Which things jump out and yell yell to you? You need me. You need me. You need me in your life. <laughs> Do you ever get that? Like you, you look through a new catalogue and you just see a product that just straight away screams, you know, I need that. I have a, um, a suite that wasn't part of the pre-order, but it's first on my list when the catalogue goes live uh, and it is beautiful again really earthy sort of um, tones to it lots of texture in the DSP um, really really beautiful and it's top of my list because that's kind of what I radiate towards I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head I'd have to have a look at my index or my contents page so on your contents page in your catalog don't ask me what page it's on but it's at the beginning of the catalog in those first few pages um, it lists all of the product suites so you can see all of the suites there and then at the back you've got the contents page which lists all the individual um, stamp sets and also where you can find all the different things like where you find all the dies and the accessories and all that sort of thing so that's where you'll find some of those things i did read through all of the information at the beginning of the catalog i think it was like the first 12 or 13 pages um, there's lots of really great information in there so when you get your catalog Make sure you have a read through the, some of those pages. Don't just skip straight to the product because, you know, that's what we usually want to do is skip straight to the product. Um, but, yeah, there's lots of great information in those first few pages. So be sure to have a read of those. And it explains a few things um, about, you know, some of the products and stuff as well. All right, I've lost a die off here. There we go. That one's fallen off. Um, that goes on there somehow, like so. I know why that fell off. It's only being held on by a little bit of the double-sided tape. I think these ones are going to have to go onto my magnetic sheets because I think these ones are going to be used a fair bit. All right, 
So there we've got some bits to play with. And I moved that, didn't I, with my trimmer. All right. Not my trimmer. What am I talking about? My die cutting machine. Okay, so let me bring in now my card base. Oh, I've just dumped all the card stock on top of it. Hang on a minute. Where did it go? There it is. It's for my extra pieces and this piece of designer series paper, which we need to cut down. So this is how my project is going to look so far. So I've got a base of Moody Mauve. Love this. It's my favorite in color. Color. I love all the in colors, but this is my favorite one so far because, of course, you know, I'm a pink and purple girl. So um, this piece here is the reverse side of the main feature piece. So I'm putting that one down there uh, somewhere like that. And then this piece, I'm going to use the pebbled path side of this green daisy piece. And that's going to go down here, but I'm going to put that down a little bit lower. So that's going to go down, um, oh no, actually I might put it up there like that. So this sort of, this one is set off to the left. This one is going all the way across. And then we've got the border. The border is going to slip in here and I'm going to need to trim that border down. So just deciding, I think I'll trim it like that so that the, I'll stick it like that and then I'll trim the ends off so that because I can't get an even number of the scallops on the page or on the card front, I like to then work out where the center is of each one kind of thing so that, you know, it sort of looks a little bit more, what do you call it? Um, not uniform, symmetrical, a little bit more symmetrical. Then we're going to have a piece. This is the next, this is the piece we need to create. So I need to create this piece, which is going to come up here like this, and it's going to go down to the bottom. In fact, we might move all of that up just a little bit. And this is going to be a banner. Well, it's not going all the way to the bottom, but it's going to go over that one there. So I need to work out what size I need. Um, so let's have a look. This is This is where I was up to with my designing of this um, sketch. So I think we want about four, or maybe four and a half. Let's have a look. And that's gonna go on there. Um, yeah, four and a half, maybe even five. Five? Hmm. Yeah, we might go five, five centimetre. All right, so I'm going to cut a five centimetre strip of this one and then we'll work out the length and then we'll banner. Oh, actually, let's work out the length now. Hang on, I'll write it on my little sticky note. All of these measurements will be um, on my blog tomorrow, so don't worry too much if you don't catch them now because I didn't give you the measurements of the other ones. Okay, so if we're going five centimetres and then we want to go down to about there-ish there by 10. Okay, we'll go five by 10. Five by 10. So that's the thing. When you see a um, sketch, you can just work out. So a lot, most times the sketches won't come with measurements. So just look at the sketch and then... You know, use your eye to try and work out the measurements and you can really change it up however you like. Like you can make those measurements whatever you want them to be because, of course, the sketch is just a guideline and you can change that sketch and do all different sorts of things, you know, with it. Um, and I love that about using sketches. All right, and then this piece is going to be 10 centimetres. There we go. Now, while I've got it in the trimmer, I'm just going to move the cutting blade away. I know that this is, um, I'm going to flip it over actually. I know that this is five centimeters wide. So I'm going to take it to two and a half centimeters. Wait, which is the bottom? This is going to be the bottom. Two and a half centimeters. And I'm going to score it with my scoring blade because that's where I'm, that's the center. That's where I'm going to cut 
to make my little bannered end. Oh, I might have scored it up a little bit too high. That's okay. We can sort that out with our bone folder. All right, so that is going to go like that. Oops, now everything else has moved. All right, we'll banner this first and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we'll turn it over because we can see it easier. I don't know if you can see. Can you see the score mark on there that I've made? So then you can decide how deep you want to have. So I'm going to banner this like that. And you can decide how deep you want your banner to go or how, yeah, how deep you want your um, cut to go. Um, so I might just go up to about there. So how far in is that that I've cut that? So that's just under one and a half. Well, let's go up to one and a half. I'll put a mark with my pencil. And then that way, that's... Um, Easier for me to write the instructions, to be honest, <laughs> but also too, it gives you a bit of a guideline as well. So we'll snip up. So in the center at 2.5, so that's 2.5 centimeters, and we're going to snip up 1.5. And then we go from corner to that point there that we've snipped up the middle, okay? Like that. And we'll do the other side, corner to the center and there you have your banner okay and then if I line that up on my grid paper you can see that that is nice and symmetrical now because I did even measurements um, I'm going to say um, score I'm writing down score at 2.5 and snip up 1.5 there we go alrighty good Okay, so then that is going to go on here. I love cards that have got lots of layers. I love doing layers on my cards. All right, so that's going to go there. That's going to go there. Now, you can have a larger white edge of your scallop if you want to, or you can just have a little bit of scallop. I think I'm going to take it down. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take it down to about there. So halfway across there like that. And then that piece is going to go there like that. There we go. And then we're going to have our circle. So now I have to decide if the circle is going to be too big. I could move this over a little bit more that way. And then have the circle. We're not going to see much left of the scallop, are we? Hmm. Maybe I might change my idea. Um, in the in the um, sketch, it was a smaller scallop, but I didn't have a small scallop, so I chose the large scallop. So what I might do, that might be where we use our ribbon instead. So we might use our ribbon there instead of the scallop. If I had a smaller scallop, that would have been perfect, but we're not going to see much of it because of the size of the circle. But I think we're going to need that size of circle for the flowers. Let's just see. Well, we might be able to go with a smaller one, actually. Let's just see. No, I think we're going to need the larger circle. I think the smaller circle might be too small. We could try it. Let's try it. I've already got it die cut. So I don't need to cut it again. Oh, here it is. I left it out. I think this one's going to be too small. I'll put that scallop back. Where'd that scallop go? Yeah, we're still going to lose the scallop anyway. So I think we'll still do ribbon. But let's have a look and see with our flowers. Our flowers can go off the edge a little bit. And we can layer them over the top. get away with the smaller one actually all right let's layer our ribbon down we'll put our ribbon down here the only problem is with the ribbon is I don't have a layer to oh I could stick these two together and then wrap it around there I suppose but I don't have anything to wrap it around on the other side so that's going to be 
actually if we tuck it down under there and just have the little edge of it. it does tend to fray a little bit this ribbon so but if you like the frayed edge look then that's okay maybe we can purposely have the frayed edge look oh yes i like that actually i like the look of that ribbon there Oop, no, we're going with a small one, aren't we? There, like that. Something like that, and then we'll add all the greenery. Yeah, we can have that overlapping, the larger flower. We might go with the smaller circle. What do you think? Do you think the smaller circle or the larger circle? Let's try it again with the larger circle. Kind of lose the circle of that one, but the circle is just really to break it up. From all the pattern and to be able to still see those flowers could have actually had this one a little bit longer a little bit taller do you like the smaller one glenda yeah We've got to put the sentiment somewhere too. So this is the sentiment banner that came with the, oh, actually that would fit there, wouldn't it? So I was maybe going to use this one that came from the, the stylish shapes the same as this one. That will cover up that flower a little bit, but this one would fit perfectly in there. If I had one of the sentiments that fits in there, let's have a look. What sentiments do we have? Um... Oops, so Daisy, so sorry, would fit there or wishing you the brightest birthday. You made my day. Will that fit on there? Let's have a look. I really wanted to use you made my day, but I don't think it will fit. I think it's a bit long for this one. Yeah, it's a bit long. We could just do a strip. We could just do a strip and... Um, yeah, it's too long for that one. That's that's a good size for the smaller sentiments. But it does fit on this one. So we could use that there. Oh, you know what we could do? We could tuck it under that flower perhaps and have it coming out from there. And then we've got the bannered end, end which sort of brings this in a bit too, doesn't it? We could do that. All right, I might stamp it on there. Could mask the sentiment and stamp over two lines. Oh, clever cookie. Of course I could. Yes. Thank you, Amber. You made my day. Yeah, let's do that. Because that one I think goes really nicely just there. It just fits perfectly. All right. Thanks, Amber. Full of good ideas, that girl. <laughs> I always say that. She's always so full of good ideas. Are you like, yeah, okay, so you like the smaller one, Glenda. Okay. Is that straight? That's not straight. Hang on. Hang on. Let's just get this on the block. Line it up with my grid paper. Let it relax because it's a sentiment and it's a long stamp. And so it can be a bit flexy. So I'm using my grid paper to let it... Um, to line it up on the grid paper, but also to relax to its natural um, shape. And then I'm taking my block to the stamp and picking it up that way. And then that should be nice and straight. Now, the next question is, what color am I gonna stamp the sentiment? All right, so you think the smaller one, let's have a look at the smaller. Did anybody have any, anyone else have any um, ideas? Um, Glenda said, does the dyes cut the flowers out on that DSP sheet? Oh, um, I haven't checked that actually. Let's have a look. Good question. Good question. Let's see. Let's see. So there's our big one. Um, nope. Um, is it raining? Sounds like it's raining. Um, so it doesn't seem to cut out any of those ones. Does it fit on that big one there? It is raining. Well, 
there you go. They did say it was going to start to rain and we're probably going to have rain for the rest of the week, which isn't much fun when you've got to go out. No, that one doesn't fit, doesn't seem to fit Glenda. Um, let me try the smaller one. Now I've got to get it back on my sheet. Which way does it go? Oh, there we go. Let's try the smaller one and see if the smaller one fits. I think the smaller one's a bit too big too. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like they do on this one, Glenda. Maybe on some of the other sheets perhaps, on some of the other designer series papers, but yeah, not this one, unfortunately. So great question though, because often with our designer series papers, Stampin' Up! creates them so that our dies do coordinate, but not this one, not this time. All right, smaller circle. Smaller circle, where are you? There you are. Let's go back to the smaller circle. I'm going to need to trim this ribbon up. Do you know what? I used to, one thing I used to do years ago with my ribbons is if you have a little bit of PV, PVA, PV, PVA, PVA glue, if you dab a little bit of glue along the edge of your ribbon, it stops it from fraying. I wouldn't do it with the multi-purpose liquid glue though because it stays tacky when it dries. But if you have a little bit of just ordinary PVA, you know, like craft glue, like kids craft glue or wood glue, you could dab a little bit of that along the edge um, to stop it from fraying. But I'm actually going to put adhesive right to the end of that, which hopefully will help it stop from fraying. So I need to cut that at, um, measure it here against the card. I need to cut that at 10.5, which is the width of the card. You can tell when I'm thinking, can't you? Because I stopped talking. Oh, I cut that a bit long. I'll just trim that up just a tad. All right, and I'll use a little bit of um, tear and tape behind that which will help that to stop fraying, hopefully. All right, this is gorgeous, gorgeous ribbon, but it does fray. So if you can um, banner the ends of it, like, you know, flag them so that it doesn't fray or something like that, that would be really good. Um, it just, that won't work on this particular project though. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna start sticking down these layers so that we can start having a, a fiddle with these other pieces. All right, I'll ditch the scallops. We're not gonna go with the scallops. Um, these two pieces can be adhered. I'll put this one down first and then the ribbon. So I'll just use a little bit of um, stamp and seal. Now, just to let you know, the multi-purpose liquid glue, actually, I'm gonna use multi-purpose, come to think of it, because I've got to get this one lined up right against the edge. At the moment, the multi-purpose liquid glue is unorderable because it sold out during the <laughs> during the last chance. Oh no, it was during the um, free shipping day the other day. Um, this glue is actually going up in price in the new catalog. So a lot of people have been snapping it up, um, but it is due, it, they did originally say May, but then I saw yesterday that it had been changed to this week. So it's due to come in this week, which is good. Um, now I want this down a little bit lower than halfway. Um, yeah, so when it comes in, if you want to stock up on glue, it might be a good idea to stock up on it before it goes up in price in the new catalogue. There's a few price increases um, that are going to be in the new catalogue because, of course, um, with the economic climate, the way things are at the moment, so much has gone up, including just raw materials and things like that, that produce these products. Um, yeah, everything is increasing in price. So unfortunately, some of the prices have had to be increased as much as Stampin' Up! hates to have to increase prices. Um, sometimes it's, you know, and they do try to keep their prices down for as long as possible. But sometimes it's just inevitable that they, you know, they have to put them up because otherwise it just wouldn't be, you know, feasible for them to keep stocking that product. So, yeah, so the, the multi-purpose liquid glue is one of those. 
such products. All right, so hopefully that tape will help that to not fray. Might fray a little bit, especially when we go to take the backing off. So I'm going to do that very carefully. There we go. All right, so we're going to line this piece up. And before I adhere that, I'm just going to tuck this under where I want this to sit. So it's just going to tuck under the edge there like that. And I'm going to use my grid paper here to line this ribbon up. And I've got tear and tape on this, so I don't want that to fall down in the wrong spot because it'll stick. So I'll line my card, up, card base up on my grid paper. Actually, let me move it up a little bit so I've got a line here to follow. And that should be about right. And I'll just run that all the way along there. There we go. Beautiful. And then we'll take this piece and adhere that over the top. Alrighty. I am going to use tear and tape on this. Oh, sorry, stamp and seal on this one because I'm going to be adhering it to the ribbon. And I don't like to use liquid glue on my ribbons because sometimes it can seep into the ribbon and, yeah, make ugly marks on it. So I just like to use a dry adhesive when I'm using ribbon. All right, so this piece I'm just going to – oh, hang on, sticky fingers. Just get that off my fingers. There we go. So I'm just going to line that up with the bottom of the um, – wild wheat color and this piece is going all the way across to the other side it's going to make sure that I cover up that wild wheat underneath okay so that's that's the layers that we've got so far um, then we're going to have our bannered piece and look the you know it's up to you if you want the the banner to you know the peaked part of your banner to be over that color you can but if you don't like that you can move it down I, think I want to have it up a little bit higher so I'm not too worried about that there um, and this piece I'm gonna have over the top in fact do I want to mount that piece I might mount that banner and then we'll mount this one too how will that work because this is just DSP so yeah I think I'm going to mount this one, but we want to use lots of dimensionals on that because it's only designer series paper. It's not only designer series paper because it is designer series paper. Um, it's a lot more, um, a lot thinner than cardstock. So we want to make sure that it's not going to um, sag. So, whoops, still got a bit of glue on my fingers, I think. Got sticky fingers. So I'm going to make sure that I put plenty of Stampin' Dimensionals on here. If you had um, the um, foam adhesive sheets, you could use those. Or the strips, you could use those. The strips, however, in case you didn't know, the strips are a bit higher in dimension to the dimensionals. So just be aware of that if you are using them and dimensionals together. The strips are um, thicker, higher. They sit higher in case you didn't realise that. Let's move all of those out of the way. Just leaving that sentiment strip there so I don't forget about it. Oh, no, I wasn't doing that one. I was going to do the other one, wasn't I? There we go. All right. Now, let's work out where we want to put this down. So we're going to have this down here like that. We want that overlapping. So I think around about there would be great. Let's just stick it there. Hopefully I got that reasonably straight. Beautiful. <gasps> Look at that. And then see, that's now a bit of a feature on the front it's so pretty all right and then we're going to have these and we're going to put the, our flowers on top so I do like the smaller the smaller um circle I think that was a good call thanks for that Glenda okay 
So I'm going to adhere my circle first and then I'm going to put my flowers on top so that I can arrange them nicely. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, some Stampin' Dimensionals. Or actually, I'm going to move that down a little bit. I'm going to put some Stampin' Dimensionals on this side of my circle and on this side I'm going to put glue so that will hold to that layer. So to do that, I'm going to flip my circle this way, position it where I want to have it. So that's actually about right, right where I want to have it now. And you just have to make sure that those dimensionals don't go over the edge of that DSP, the floral DSP. There we go. All right, so we can remove those now. Add a little bit of glue to hold this side down. And flip that over. And just make sure that those dimensionals aren't hitting on the cardstock. I mean on the designer series paper. There we go. Okay, so we got that one. And now with our flowers... I'm going to pop them up onto some dimensionals as well, but I want it. So we're going to end up with two layers high of dimension, but I want to make sure that I get them lined up where I want them first. And we need room for our sentiment as well. So our sentiment has to go across here. Maybe we should stamp our sentiment first before we stick all these down. Yeah, so it'll be something like that. All right, let's 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 stamp our sentiment. And pop these over here. We've got all these little bits too, and we've got some leaves. So you'll notice I'm just keeping to the three colours. Well, four if you include white. Um, but just keeping to the, the colours that are in the DSP more so. I didn't add in the copper clay, um, but that's okay. All right, what colour? Um... I'm thinking maybe stamping in the pebbled path, either the pebbled path or the wild wheat. Let's try it in the pebbled path. Now I am going to um, do what Amber suggested and because I like the you made my day sentiment. So I'm going to use some of my washi tape and do some masking on that and hope that I can line it up okay. You made my day. So I'm going to just put a bit of washi tape over the words my day so that I've just got the you made and I'm going to stamp that first in the pebbled path. So we'll ink that up. I'll just do a test on my scrap paper. Yep, okay. So we'll ink that up, take off the washi tape Make sure that I didn't get any ink on the M and just line that up to stamp that in the middle. Um, hopefully I'm getting it in the middle. Yep. All right, now get a clean bit of washi tape because that one's got ink on it. Now we need to clean the stamp. Oh, no worries, Rose. You'll watch, watch the rest on YouTube. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. It's great to have you here. Have a lovely evening. All right. And then I'll cover this up. Whoops. I'll cover up the you made because we already stamped that. So I'll cover up those words you made. And I'm just going to ink up the my day. Take off the washi tape. Move the ink pad and try and line up the my day underneath the you made. I'm not sure how well I'm going to line this up, but we'll see how we go. Oh, it's a little bit, actually my ink pad is a bit juicy too. Yeah, I don't, I didn't do that very well. I think I need a bit of practice with that one. 
the My Day is a bit crooked and I didn't stamp it down as firmly as the You Made, so it looks a little bit, um, it looks a little bit um, off. Yeah. But anyway, but that's an idea that you can do, but yeah, like me, you might need a little bit of practice first. <laughs> but that's okay. That was a very good suggestion. Um, and I know if Amber was doing it, she'd probably do it perfectly. First go. <laughs> but um, yes, I need a bit of practice. All right, I'm going to get um, a baby wipe. Sorry, it might be a little bit noisy. The packet is noisy. Um, I'm just going to dab, uh, not dab off, sorry. I'm going to um, get my bone folder and just scrape very gently my pebbled path ink pad because it's also very juicy. And when I stamped that sentiment, it was a little bit heavy. So I'm just going to push that ink gently down into the ink pad. When you're doing this, you don't want to use anything that has sharp edges because it might tear the foam in your ink pad. So either use a bone folder or the back of a spoon. Um, so that you don't damage your ink pad. That's the last thing you want to do is to um, damage that foam on the ink pad. There we go. All right, I'll pop that up there because I might use that again. All right, um, let's try a sentiment on this one. I'll try that other. I'll try the same sentiment. You made my day. And if not, if this one doesn't work, Oh, I don't like the look of this one. Then what I'll do is uh, let's stamp it on some scrap first, hey? Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, then I was going to say I'll use the other sentiment that I was looking at before. Okay, stamp that in the middle. Often when I'm using dies for my sentiment, oh, look, that turned out well first go. There we go. Um, I will stamp it first on my cardstock and then die cut it once the ink dries. Um, that way you can line up the die with your stamped image rather than trying to do it the other way around because it's a little bit challenging trying to um yeah stamp on a small die like that a small die cut piece so just clean that leaf because i couldn't remember if i cleaned that before clean my sentiment okay all righty so let's see now if we can fit this one on. We might tuck it under one of the flowers. So we've got some leaves. We've got some greenery, which isn't actually green in this case, but you know. And we've got our flowers. Now our sentiment die is going to go down here like that. Okay, I haven't stuck that yet because we'll get everything positioned first. Deciding how I'm going to do my daisies. Now, we could have the daisies tucked under and have the sentiment on top. Or we could have... Oh, my husband just turned the, the, the um, TV on. It was very loud. I don't know if you just all heard that. We could have that overlapping like that somehow to cover up the end of that banner. What do you think? That looks pretty good. How about that? And then we can tuck in some of these other little bits. Yeah, I think I'm liking the look of that. Alrighty, so let's add, I'm going to add the sentiment banner first. So I'll put some dimensionals onto that, just not right at the end. Might grab my minis this time because this one's a little bit smaller. Um, so, yeah. So we're not going all the way to the U. To the end of where the U is. There we go. All right, so I'm going to adhere that first and then we can arrange the flowers around it and then add the slip the greenery in as well. Oh, but we were going to put that flower there too, wasn't I? Um, let's see. Well, I might put that flower there first and I'll just put that one flat. Just put a little bit of glue in the middle, which will be enough to hold it, but it'll give me the opportunity of tucking in the other um, the other greenery, if I want to tuck greenery in behind there. So let's go about there. 
Okay, whoops. There we go. And then we'll put this one down here like that. And then this one, I'm going to pop that up onto dimensionals and have that overlapping that. And this one, this one I might have on dimensionals as well. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'll use some of my large ones. I'll put one in the middle and some towards the bottom of this flower. Putting them, keeping them in close to the center. Making sure my dimensionals don't go off the edge. I might use a couple of minis. So the minis and the standard size dimensionals, they are the same thickness. There we go. Um, and the foam adhesive sheets are the same thickness as these ones. It's just the adhesive strips. They're a little bit um, thicker. Um, and that is mainly because I think they are mostly used for shaker cards. So with the shaker card, you need a little bit more um, depth. There we go. This is coming together quite nicely. All right, and I'll add that one there. So we'll put a couple of minis behind the back of this one. Just making sure that's going to overlap nicely there. And put one so I'm feeling what I'm doing is I'm laying this in place where I want that to go wait which way did I want to have it that way that's right laying that in place where I want that to go and then feeling where it sort of dips down and that's where it tells me where to put a dimensional so that it's going to be supported yep and one up here and then the rest should just adhere to everything else. Yep. Oh, we might need one under that one there too. So see how I'm doing that? I'm just popping it down in place and then just pressing to see where it feels like it's not supported. And that's where I'm putting the dimensionals. Okay, so that's enough there. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue just on the um, flower center so that that can attach to the um, label, the sentiment label. There we go. So in there like that, and that'll hide that end of the banner as well. So that we've just got the bannering on one end, which is like this. So it ties in this banner with this banner. There we go. Okay, so that one's stuck flat. These two are up on dimensionals. And now I'll just put that the dimensionals away and we'll bring in our other little pieces here and just have a look and see what goes what looks good so we've got all these little pieces so we'll just have a little play see what looks good and yeah just have a little a little play here now this one might be nice under here. Oh, that'll be nice up there. Yes, we might even need another one of those. We might need two of those. So I think in this color, it's going to blend in too much with the designer series paper behind it. So I think bringing in the pebble path is just lovely. Yeah, we might die cut another pebble path piece and these little ones I like them in there this one looked better coming out from that one yeah all right we'll die cut we'll quickly die cut one more of those I've got that scrap where do I put that scrap now? See, this is why I cut that other piece before how I did, so that it would be the right size to cut another piece if I needed to. And it is. I love my little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. It's so easy just to grab it out and um, plonk it down on my desk. 
And it does such a great job. All right, so, oops, that slipped there. Hold that washi in place, or washi hold that in place, I should say. All righty. Now you could also use a white one, actually. A white one might have looked nice up there too. But let's just go with the, the pebbled path to bring in that color a little bit more into the color palette. All right, so we'll just remove this one. So does anybody else have this one? Have you had, um, would the sentiment stamp more evenly with the foam mat? Oh, I forgot to use my foam mat. Yes, most probably would, Amber. Yes, thank you for that. I forgot to, you totally forgot to use it, didn't I? You are right. Yes, it would have. It stamped, stamped okay um, the second time, but yeah, if I had have done, if I, when I was doing the um, the masking, oh, this one's a bit stuck, hang on a minute. When I was doing the masking, because I was doing it in two parts, it probably would have been better if I had have used the, um, the stamp and pierce mat, yes. I'll have to give that another go on another card. There we go. So with this one, um, this is a little bit of a delicate die cut piece. So just remove that really carefully. Did that cut all the way through? Oh, it did. It's just stuck. It's just stuck in there. There we go. I love my take your pick tool for jobs like this. It's a very handy dandy little tool. little piece here just doesn't want to come out what's going on oh there we go got it and then there's these little pieces in the center I'll pop them out from the front there we go they just popped out then good all righty that one back on our die sheet Okay, so if we have these, we could have them down there like that. Yeah, we could have them sort of on two layers, two, two not two layers, what do you call it? Two levels, two levels. That could look good. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's put a little bit of glue on these and get them in. So these are very, very fine. So you could either use the glue dabbing technique with your um, silicon craft sheet to um, get the glue on the back of these or just use tiny little dabs of the glue. There we go. All right, so we'll tuck that in down there. I just want to make sure that that's not going to stick out the side of the card beyond the, the side there. I'm going to take my take your pick tool. In fact, I'm going to turn it over to my palette tool. Uh, sorry, not my palette tool. My palette tool? Yeah, that's what you call it, isn't it? And I'm just going to press that in under there to press that down to make sure that that glue is caught onto the cardstock or onto the card front. There we go. Good. All right, turn back over because I like this is my favorite end. And then this one, I wonder if this would slip in between. So I'm just lifting up the cardstock, the flower there, to slip it in underneath there between the circle and the flower, if I can get that in, if I left enough room. Oh, I did put the dimensionals very close. I can fit it in just in there. All right, I'll put a bit of glue on there. And we'll get that adhered. So just a little bit of glue there on the end. And then just tuck that in. So if you are casing this card, you might want to do this bit ahead of time and actually adhere this piece before you adhere that flower. 
but because I kind of hadn't decided where I wanted it, um, yeah, I'll do the same thing again. I'll turn that around to the spatula. Spatula, that's what I, that's what it's called. Is that what I called it before? I don't know what I called it before now. And just press that down in there. There we go. Beautiful. All right, and then we've got to attach these little leaves as well. Now, these leaves, they could have been good as well in the, um, the pebbled path, but I'm going to use these ones that I've already made, and I think, too, it'll also tie in the colour of the um, centre of the flowers. Now, if you wanted to shape these as well, you could shape them with your bone folder before attaching them. I haven't done that today. I usually do shape my flowers and my leaves, but I actually didn't didn't think to do it today so I was too busy trying to work out my design there we go and we'll pop one down there as well um, oh no worries fee it was so great that you could join us thank you oh you like my card thank you so much I'll catch you again soon there we go and we'll pop that down there like that there we go. All right. And now for the bling. So what do you think? It's tying it all in again. Uh, tying it all in a bit now, isn't it? And now we'll add the bling. And I think that ribbon is not going to fray. That's going to stay put because I've got the tape on there and I've got all the layers on top. Um, so, yeah. All righty. Now, for the bling, I have these ones which go with the in colours. And then there's these ones that go with the sweet. However, we haven't used any of these colours in this combination, apart from there's a little bit of the um, copper clay in the paper. So we could use copper clay um, to bring in a little bit of copper clay, or we can go with the ones that coordinate with the colours that we've used. So we've got the pebbled path, and the wild wheat and the moody mauve. Um, so I just want to have a look and see what the moody mauve looks like. Oh, the moody mauve will be nice actually. Let me see that on there. I think that'll be nice. Moody mauve on moody mauve. I like that okay and so we'll just stick with the moody mauve or as they say in america mauve moody mauve where do we want to have this one maybe down here somewhere have another little blingy bling bling in here and then we can have um, This is often the hardest part, is trying to work out where you want to put your bling. We'll pop one over here, and then we'll pop one down the bottom here as well. So we might use another of that one, that colour there. There we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got our odd numbers, which is awesome. Need to have odd numbers of bling. So there is finished project what do you think lots of layers isn't there lots and lots of layers I love layers did you notice I didn't do any distressing today however the papers that I've used have a distressed look to them so still in keeping with my theme <laughs> my favorite style <laughs> uh, um, all right let's have a look and see if there are any other um, comments or questions that I've missed. Um, yeah, oh, you love the DSP, Deborah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, and Glenda says, beautiful card. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad that you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, just a really beautiful layered card. And as I said, there's so many sketches out there that if you get a bit stuck, oh, thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah said beautiful card. Um, if you get stuck with layouts or 
how to use the products or what you want your card to look like just go onto Pinterest and have a look for card sketches um, and there's so many there to choose from and as I said look I'll show you again the one that I chose there it is there. So that's the sketch there. You can see I've changed it up a little bit. I've put, instead of having an um, embellishment or something there where that butterfly is, I've put my label there. Instead of the scallops, I've used ribbon. And I just worked out the measurements myself. So it's not too difficult. And I added the white circle there to sort of lift those flowers up off all of that busyness of that designer series paper just to break it up a little bit. Um, so there you go. All right, well, I will tip the camera back up so that I can say goodbye to you all face to face. So bear with me one moment and I'll just remind you of a couple of things um, when I do that. So let me just check did that cover up. Yes, it did. All right, here we go. So that one goes up and these ones go down. It's a bit of a adjustment that happens. There we go, and then we've got to do a flippity flip. There we go. And adjust the light so that I'm not sitting in the dark. This, um, I would really love to have, actually, I'd love to have wall-mounted lamps that are always facing this way so that I don't always have to adjust my lamps. I mean, it works. But ultimately, that would be awesome if I had wall-mounted lamps that, could just face this way all the time and then I wouldn't have to keep changing my lamps all the time. <laughs> so there you go. So there's my pretty card. So I just, I just love that designer series paper. It's gorgeous. I love that whole suite. So that is the fresh as a daisy. Is that it? Is that, let me, let me check in my catalog, in my brand new catalog. Um, yes, fresh as a daisy, sweet from the new annual catalogue. This is the 2023 to 2024 annual catalogue. Um, again, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Australia and you would like one of these catalogues, be sure to let me know and I would love to get one out to you. And remember too that I have my product shares, or let's go one either side. I've got my product shares. So we've got a, um, a paper share with some of the new papers from the annual catalogue. And then we've got the um, in colour, the annual catalogue, sorry, the 2023-2024 annual catalogue product share, which has all the in colours. Um, and we've got a product share for that one as well. So you can get either or, or you can get both. And the link will be in the description of the video here. So if you have any questions or there's anything I can help you with, um, please feel free to let me know. One thing I didn't tell you is if you are looking for these products in my online store, here's where you'll find them from the 2nd of May. So if you're currently a demonstrator, you can get them now. Or if you join now, you can put them in your starter kit. Remember, you get $66 worth of free product in your starter kit. Or on the 2nd of May, you can go to my online store at mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com or you can go to mandywithabee.stampinup.net and you can um, find them there. Um, now, this is my April host code if anyone is shopping with me in April. Uh, um, but from the 1st of May, there will be a new one. So I will put that up on my um, Facebook page and on all my socials and it'll be on my blog. If ever you can't find it, just go to my blog. It's always there. Um, but yeah, but I'm here to help you and to give you creative inspiration as well. So I hope that you feel inspired today and excited to get into some card making. Um, and if there's anything I can help you with, please feel free to let me know. All right, well, I will let you all go and I hope you have a great week this week. Um, I will be live on Thursday over on my YouTube channel at 11 a.m. So feel free to come and join me over there. Um, and otherwise, I'll be back here on Facebook for my live next Monday afternoon at 4 p.m. And that's Australian Eastern Standard Time. No more daylight savings now. So sad. <laughs> All right. Have a great week, everyone, and happy crafting. Bye.